In last week's episode, we dropped Kadoa's hook in this remarkable anchorage of Paul Ridmouth. And today, we set sail once again, heading west to a new anchorage only a short hop from where we are now. The destination which we were to momentarily call our new home was an 18th century Georgian town called Charlestown. After arriving, Carly wasted no time at all settling herself in to enjoy the sunshine. Although I had set my eyes on exploring the crystal clear waters which lay beneath us. There was plenty of fantastic looking structure under the water which meant the hunt was on for some lobsters. Here you can see a small edible crab, but it looks too small to take, so there's no need to disturb him. It didn't take long to find what we were looking for. I just want to lightly tap the lobster to prompt it to head for one of the exits to what looks like a fairly complex cave. I don't want to drag the lobster out as you risk injuring them and at this point I didn't know if they're a keeper or not. The lobster heads for an exit towards the far end of this structure. I reach in to grab what turns out to be one of the largest female lobsters I have ever caught and she's laden with eggs. These are the next generation of lobsters and she looks in great condition. So it's back in her cave she goes, and the search continues. It didn't take long to spot another set of lobster claws in a hole, although this guy came right out at me and then made a break for it. After catching him, it becomes clear that he's too small to keep, but my new dive buddy, Danny, has never seen a lobster in the wild before, so I show him before signalling that he's just too small to keep. And so, he goes back too. Now, many of you have asked me about my electronic underwater breathing system, and so I've put the details along with some of my thoughts in a pinned post underneath this video that you can go and check out. Meanwhile, back on Kadoa, it was time to take Hank on his adventure for the day. Now many of you ask about the walks that we go on, and so on the anchorages guide that we've built on Kadoa.com, we actually map out Hank's walks on the individual pages. They're all remarkable walks, and this one is no exception. Pick up that shimmer. 
It looks like there's glitter everywhere. Although there is, all, by all accounts, a cove over there called Silver Mine Cove, so... Maybe there's some trace minerals in the water here that are being washed up. Or maybe it's just because we haven't seen the sun in so long, we've forgotten what it looks like, and it's just reflecting off the uh, sand. But what a day! So we actually had to take a little bit of a coastal walk from where we dropped the dinghy off to find a beach that would allow Hank on, because the one that's closest to the town itself, uh, there's no dogs, but... This is worth the walk. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, his bowl became the frisbee, which. Ah. <laughs> it lasts too long. You lost all your toys, Hank. <laughs> After heading back to town, we spotted an incredibly interesting looking offering that was packed full of history and told the story of possibly the boldest rescue mission in all of recorded history. The story of Ernest Shackleton and the expedition ship, the Endurance, which really is an unbelievable adventure. Upon entering the museum, you're immediately teleported back in time, where you start to get a sense for the kind of person Ernest Shackleton was, as well as the type of men who might be attracted to his Antarctic exploration missions back then. Carlswell don't do job adverts. But if they did. The museum then sets the scene for just how challenging the conditions were that those men faced. For back in 1916, the expedition set off from Britain to the South Pole on a ship called the Endurance. As the mission ventured further south, the ship and her crew found themselves in some of the thickest ice ever seen. And despite their best efforts to push through, eventually they found themselves trapped. There they remained for 10 long months before insurmountable pressure eventually crushed the ship and along with it almost any hope of survival. Luckily for the crew their leader had a plan and that was to head north to a place called Elephant Island where they took three lifeboats they had salvaged along with the rest of their food helped by their huge pack of dogs. Shortly after arriving, Shackleton took five of his best men and set off on another daring mission to attempt to sail 800 nautical miles in little more than a sailing dinghy in the roughest and most dangerous seas in the entire world. Using only celestial navigation, if the course was just a few degrees out, they could easily miss the island where their fate would surely be doomed along with all the men they left behind on Elephant Island. Six men would be packed into this tiny boat for 16 days before they make it to Georgia, dealing with vicious seas and ice cold water filling their vessel, and even hurricane strength winds which claimed much larger vessels. Although even after pulling off a miracle in reaching Georgia, the odds were still very much stacked against them as they had landed on the wrong side of the island and there was 26 miles between them and the whaling station with no less than a mountain range blocking the way that no one had ever crossed before. Exhausted, malnourished and ill-equipped for such a demanding crossing, Shackerton also had three crew members who were now too sick to continue and so they were left on the beach to take shelter once again under their life raft. After a gruelling hike across uncharted and treacherous terrain, Shackleton finally reached the whaling station to get help. After four long months on Elephant Island, with no idea if Shackleton had made it or perished, Shackleton's men were rescued. Amazingly, and against all odds, without the loss of any of his crew. It's for this reason that Ernest Shackleton is, and always will be, a national Hero. You know, it's remarkable really. 
I already knew the story of Shackleton and those incredibly brave men, but there's something about being there up close and hearing the story again. It just, it just reminds you that no matter how impressive you think the life you're trying to live is, no matter how brave you try and be when the moment calls for it, there really are just different levels of human. That Shackleton rescue was just something else. Those men were cut from a different cloth. Amazing. And after getting a taste for this amazing historical port, it was back to Godoa for a quick change before collecting our new Anchorage friend and my earlier dive buddy, Danny, to head back out to an ancient looking treasure which waited for us. This is our friend, Danny. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Why don't you ask the man for his expert opinion on if you, you like, I like this. Now, okay, how about you surprise me with. <laughs> this is quite a cool repurposing of this little building. Do you like your rum? Where did we stay? Where in Rome? Should I just do it? Two bits of ice in mine, please, actually. Yeah, thank you. Good. Good. Good like that. I'm going to go right off the wall with you then. Okay. Oh, greedy Fox. Greedy Fox. I don't know if I'm greedy for that With over 500 varieties of rum to choose from, this place might be worthy of more than one visit. There's certainly a lot of character packed into this little place, as there is with this entire port. Everywhere you turn, it feels as if you've gone back in time. This place is the perfect escape from the realities of 21st century life, as it feels as if very little has changed in a very long time. Discover all the rest of the gems we've explored over the years, here, over on Kodoa, dot com.